Pathfinder. Give me a whoop whoop if you're excited to be here. Whoop whoop. All right, I'm going to be annoying. I'm going to ask you guys to get back up on your feet. Come closer together. We're going to get warm. We're going to sing his praises. And we're going to do a little bit of dancing as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get your hands together, everybody. All right, so uh, apologies. We have a, a few technical difficulties. Our words, um, you may partially see it. Um, but if you can't, these are songs that you all know. Our first song, we're going to sing a praise medley. It comprises of four songs. Who's the King of the Jungle? I May Never March. He's Abel. And we'll end off with Father Abraham. Yeah? All right, get your hands going, everybody.
introduce ourselves to you. So we are your praise team for the 2024 Legacy Campery. And our Tina, we have... Hi, I'm Pastor Mossa, and I'm from Manapa. Yeah! Hi, everyone. I'm Mona, and I'm from Rio Bolt. Tyler for Lava, everyone! My name is Steven and I'm from Nina Sama! And our band on our keys, we have Sieni and Danira. Give them a round of applause. On our drums, we have Vic. And our bass guitarist, we have Vita from Real Bob. Think of your most best friend. You may think that's your best friend, but this is your best friend. Who's your best friend? God! Say, my friend is God! God! Right, so as we sing the song, I want you to claim him as your friend. Thank you. 
um, about praise, sorry. Um, oh, yeah. So this is our theme song. Um, it's called God So Loved the World. Um, if you have your book booklets with you, it's on the last page of the booklet. Um, so if you can't see the words up here, they're in your books. Um, be but before we sing it, I want us all to recite John 3.16 because this is what the song is about. So John 3, 16, 2, 3. Amen. So as we sing the song, this will be our song that we'll be singing every single night. This was the legacy that God left for us, was that he get sent his only begotten son to die for you and I. Um, and so we're going to teach you the chorus. The words are, For God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. Um, and so it goes like this. So uh, we'll sing it to you and then we'll sing the whole song again. slowly so you guys can kind of get it all right so let's start so we have um we have a few claps to go with the song the beginning of the song so the band um the singers will show you how it goes okay one two three stop clap clap stop clap clap come on guys let me see it yeah look at steven this is how you do it Jesus. 
Awesome. Thank you, Ben. I'm just going to say a prayer for us. But before I do, I, in my welcome, I miss someone very important. And uh, very soon you're going to hear him uh, because he's taking the word tonight. And uh, he's traveled all the way from the United States. So we've stolen him. We've imported him all the way from there. And uh, he's here. He's excited. excited, And he's here to talk about uh, Jesus. And so I welcome Pastor Meshach. Uh, to this space, and uh, we thank you, brother, for taking this time to uh, fellowship with us and, and share with us. Let's let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, for you love the world so much that you gave your only Son. We want to pause right now, and we want to acknowledge you for the legacy that you have left behind. The legacy, Lord, that you had ended, and for us to pick up again and start, Lord. Uh, and, and you want to do it at the lowest level at the youngest person. Uh, we want to just continue to be a mouthpiece for you, Lord. And as we come to this uh, campery, we don't want to just be here to see our friends. We don't want to be here to just because our parents said we have to come. We want to use this opportunity in this space to discover you, to learn more about you, to walk with you, Lord Father, and to ultimately Know the legacy that you have left for every individual that is here. Bless every head that is bowed here. Bless the word. Bless the drama that we're about to uh, experience and enjoy. And, and most importantly, Lord Father, we pray that you walk with us for the rest of this week. And as we dive more into what it is and walking with you, Lord Father, may you help us to be clear of mind. Help us to be loving and kind. And help us to be more like you. We pray this and we ask for your forgiveness in Jesus' name. Amen. It's the first full day of the Legacy Pathfinder Campery at Stuy Ridge Park. And I tell you, there are so many wonderful things happening around. Let's check it out.
pass me down a legacy of hope. So here at uh, Capri, the theme is legacy, and it's based out of the story of Abraham. Hi guys, I'm Abraham, and to my right, your left, I have a singing sheep. We know in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, it talks about how God calls Abraham away from his home, away from his father's land, away from his family. And the theme that you could get out of that is simply this, is that oftentimes we're so focused on where God is calling us to that we neglect to remember where God is calling us from. Hmm. That's a good question. Now is the real question. Is Opie a real father of the other actors in the Camperie drama. I'm trying to like think. I would say no, because there's so many of the sheep. I don't know. Say no. Oh, because there's 12 of them, and I just think there's too many. Yes. Why do you think so? Because he's the father of all nations. No. <laughs> no. The real father, no. <laughs> Why not? because the father of the sheep would be a sheep. Yes. No, because most of the children look the same, like the same age. So it'd be pretty difficult to have that many children of that close age. Yes. Why do you think so? It's because he looks after him like, like a father as the Lord looked after him. What do you mean? He's just got way too many kids yeah. for that to be real. But we also find about in the the story of Abraham is that Abraham is a legacy. Welcome campers. Today we're going to reveal the answer to the question of the week. Is Abraham the father of all the sheep? You guessed it. Yes, I am. All those beautiful singing sheep are all my children. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to let you on a little bit of a story. The story of Abraham parallels my own story. Come, God has called us to come to Camp Paris, and it was a step in faith but when god calls and you know it's god's call you just keep working and walking toward that goal no matter what trials come your way we just keep trusting in god because he wants us to create a legacy and as you can see my legacy is already in creation god bless everybody enjoy the camp this is father abram who's going to be abraham so stay tuned one two three legacy Pathfinder Strong.
just, just. Happy day, bro. Right. Yeah. Oh. Raphael, how was your day today? Perfect as always, Ramiel. I spent the morning giving the golden streets an extra polish. And then I had lunch on top of the rainbow with oh. final Lene. How about you? Man, perfect as well. I just finished organizing some of the many prayers that God has answered into alphabetical files. And just after lunch, went to this Halo party and where we all shared our new Halo design ideas that we're gonna show God next month. Any invites? Man. I love the hexagonal one that Susie was trialing out last week. Man, fuck. I'm personally loving the current version as well. It reminds me of ice cream. Man, I could go for some chocolate ice cream right now. Anyways, what's going on over there? Oh, I, I just want to see the look on Abram's face when God finally asked him about the whole house moving no situation. Way. Is that uh, happening now? Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's over there. Just watching her sheep. Well, oh, man, those little sheepies look cute with the little fluffy woofy ears. Romeo! Shush! Let's see what happens. Abraham. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes! Do not be afraid. It is I, the Lord your God, speaking to you. Oh! Oh! All right, uh, but... You can't see me, but I can see you. Okay. I have something to tell you. Ah, speak, Lord! Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who will bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Oh. God is calling me to leave my country, this place where I've spent my whole life. Oh, you way, I'm just about to retire. And here I am, 75 years old, and God wants me to leave everything that I know. Do you hear God's call? What the? Can you hear his voice? A word. Speaking powerfully to you, Abram. He is calling you. Wait, what are they eating? He has chosen you. Now what will you do, Abram? <sighs> Here I am, a simple shepherd man Working hard on the land to feed my family. I've spent my whole life here until God came near to call me to leave. Do you hear God's call? Can you hear his voice speaking powerfully to you? Abram, he is calling you. He has chosen you. Now what will you do, Abram? When God calls your name, He has a plan and a purpose for you to do what others can't do. You must leave this place and go forward by faith. He has a plan and a purpose. Do you hear God's call? Can you hear His voice? To me, Abram, he is calling he is you, calling he has chosen you, has chosen now me. what will you do, Abram, what will I do? Do you hear God's call, can you hear his voice, speaking powerfully to you, 
Hey, will I do? He is calling you. He has chosen you. Now what will you do, Abram? Hey, what will I do? Can really sing? Wow, wow, wee wow! That was so good! I'm so glad I missed my dessert to come and watch this. Oh, God can really choose someone who's beautiful and faithful to follow him. Yeah, but I'm just confused about something. Is it the feedback? <laughs> what is it? I mean, Abram's so set up here. Why does he need to move? Hmm. hmm, that's a good question. All I know is that with God, yeah. it always turns out right. He's God. <laughs> he knows everything, so we can trust him. Sorry to <laughs> my potato chips. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, just the other day God saw me, and he gave me a bottle of tomato sauce. I was so confused at first, but then later that day, me and Susie, we got given a kilo of potatoes. And so we made potato chippies. And you know what goes with potato chippies? Tomato sauce! Thank you, God, for the love. <sighs> oh, he sure does know, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Oh, well, I guess we'll have to wait and see till tomorrow while Abram's moving. Hmm. I'm gonna come here. Yeah. Are you? I'm gonna be here. Are, Are you, you guys gonna be here? Yeah. God is good, would you say amen? amen? Why don't you give it up for the drama club? The drama team. Praise the Lord, would you say amen? I want you to high five three people and say, you look good today. You look good today. Now high five three other people and say, I know, I know, I know. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. The reason why you look good today is because it's it's been the glory of God, would you say amen? The glory of God is radiant in your life, and I'm privileged and blessed to come all the way from the States to be here. I want to thank uh, your fearless leader, uh, Maranatha. Give her a round of applause for all the hard work, all your directors, your leaders, your pastors, your parents, because we know none of them going to get any sleep this week. Amen. But look, I'm privileged and blessed to be here today, this week. My prayer, as it was mentioned in the video, is that you would grow to have an authentic relationship with Jesus. And before, we, before we get started, I just want to share a word with you in the book of Genesis chapter 12, verse, verse 1 through 3. And this is the verse that was mentioned here during the drama. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Before I pray, I want to read it in your hearing. The Bible says this, the Lord said to Abram, Leave your land, leave Samoa, leave Tonga, leave New Zealand. And then he says this, leave your family and your father's household for the land that I will show you. And then he goes on to say that I will make you a great nation. And the Bible says that I will bless you and I will make you and your name respected. And then it goes on to say that you will be a blessing. The verse ends by saying, I will bless those who bless you. Those who curse you, I will curse. And then it ends by saying this, all the families of the earth will be blessed because of you. Let's pray. Jesus, as you've done so many times before, I simply pray that you would bless your word, that it will achieve its purpose in which it is sent and not return back to you void. Pray, God, simply that you would make your, world, your word real that your word will be relevant, and that your word will be relational. 
In Jesus' name, amen. You know, when I was reading this text and I was watching this, uh, this, this drama unfold, I couldn't help but think that for, for many of us, even, even our pathfinders, you've been in a situation where there has been a transition in your life, whether you had to move schools, whether you had to move grades, maybe you went from first grade to second grade. Some of you have left high school or uni to transition to a career. Some of you maybe have left home to another neighborhood and had to get situated with new friends and new families. And the position that I am in today, uh, where I've come from in Southern California is just a new role. I, I just got to the, the, the conference um, office about two years ago. I used to pastor a church in San Diego for about five years. And when our family went out to San Diego to pastor this church, it was, it was the best church that we've been able to, to minister to. It was the best community. And the reason why was the simple fact that as a pastor, I felt that I was able to be myself in front of this congregation because they accepted me for who I was. As a matter of fact, when they installed us into the church, um, the, the conference president that was there invited us up. And mind you, this is the first time the church has ever met me or my family. And as, as they called me up, they also tried to look for my boys at the time. And they were supposed to be in one area of the church, but, you know, just like boys, they were somewhere outside of the church, in the front of the church, in the back of the church. And me and my wife were standing there by ourselves. And I'm looking to my wife. She's looking at me. We're like, we're all the kids. And then when they finally find our boys, here, here comes five of our boys running inside of the, the church right down the pew. And, and when they get up there, my, 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 my fourth son, because I have five boys, would you say amen? Uh, my fourth son is, is crawling all over the floor. And my wife is looking at me, and she's squeezing my hand. And as the, as, as the conference president was trying to gather us together so that we could look holy, would you say amen? The baby starts yelling and crying. They start arguing. And when I got the mic after the conference president said his prayer over our family, I looked at the church, and I said, what you see is what you get. Would you say Amen church that we love, a church that poured into my family, a church that, that, that did not judge pastor for having tattoos. Would you say amen? A, a church that realized that the, the background and some of the things that I've done in my past did not define me, that accepted me for who I am. It was a church that we loved, a church that poured into us and a church that we, we poured into them. And so when the conference called and says, hey, we've got a, a, a position that, that, that might be available for you to go and impact our young people in, in Southern California, well, would you think about taking this position? And I thought to myself, I says, I looked at my wife, I says, I don't know, man. I mean, we've got it good here in, in San Diego. We've got it good at this church. We, we're, we're, we're like 10 minutes from the beach. Uh, uh, we're, we're able to paddleboard with, with the people that we love. We're able to do things uh, that we thought that we would retire in this church. I don't know, but then the, the Lord and the Spirit really compelled us to take this new role. And then I step into this role, right? And I'm in this new job, this new position, the first two weeks in the office, I don't know what I'm doing. I just sit in the office and I'm twirling around in my chair. They, 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 they decide to give me <laughs> one of the most um, challenging opportunities that I've ever had. During that year that I just started, they had me help organize a union camporee. Now, union camporee for Southern California, Coastal. We had, a, we had a set up camp for about 5,000, 6,000 Pathfinders. And mind you, I, I already felt I didn't have the education, the experience to do so. I, I already felt that maybe that, that, that I, didn't, I wasn't worthy, I didn't have the knowledge to do something like that. And so this, this first few months of me trying to fit my new role in this position, I started to doubt myself. I started to forget why God called me. I started to forget why... God even chose somebody like me. I started to doubt myself. And not only because all these lies that were spoken to me in my life before started to creep back in. And I remember being stressed out. How many of y'all have been stressed out before? I've been stressed. I was stressed out. And so where we were was this campery site was near this lake. And as we were traveling there to go set up, my auntie called me and she says, hey, Meshach, uh, your brother, your brother Jack, one of my usos, my cousins that we grew up with, 
He said, he's back in jail again. He says, would you mind going to go visit, go visit Jack in jail? And I said, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll go see him. I'm on my way to camp. Where's he at? And he ended up being at a prison that was about five minutes from where the camporee was going to be. And the thing about this prison near the camporee was when I went there, it was, it was crazy because it was a prison that I had been to before. But see, this time I wasn't <laughs> coming in on the back end. I was coming in through the, the front end of the prison. And I go there and I visit, and, and, and as I walk there, I, all these memories of me being there about 15 years ago started to flood my mind. And I remember when they opened the, the door for us to walk back to where all the cells were at, where you do your visitations. And when I walked through that, that cell, it was, a, it was the same concrete floor. It was the same concrete wall. It had that same chill. That it had the same smell. It had that same yellow line they told you to walk, and it brought me back to the last time that I was there. When I got locked up there, they told you to walk this yellow line, and as you walked this yellow line, they told you to stop and face the wall. And what they did is when you transfer from prison to prison, they take all your stuff from the prison before, and they put it in front of you, and then the officer comes, and he goes through the entire thing. And they don't do it very neatly where they just pile it up in order. No, no, no. They, they, they open that bag, and they're just throwing my stuff around. And I remember 15 years ago in the same prison, the same walkway, the same hallway that I was in, the officer was tearing my stuff apart, and he found two books that I brought over from the prison before. It was a Bible, and it was a Steps to Christ. But it was crazy because when the officer looked at it, he looked at me and he started to laugh. And he said, oh, you found religion? Everybody that comes to prison they find some type of religion. And then he told me this, we'll see how long you last. And, and, and to be honest with you, I, I, I made all the promises to God. I said, God, if you have called me, if you have chosen me, and you're getting ready to change my life, I promise if you get me out of this situation, Lord, I'm going to come back to you, and I'm going to do everything right. I'm going to quit smoking. I'm going to quit selling dope. I'm going to quit doing all these things. I'm going to quit drinking. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit gangbanging. I'm going to do all these things, Lord. And so the Lord created a miracle for me to get up out of this prison, and within a matter of three months, guess what? Back at it again. And what was crazy was this, that the Lord was reminding me as I was walking to go visit my cousin of a place that I've been before, but see, as you read the story of Abraham, it's not what just God called Abraham to, it's what God called Abraham from. Come on, somebody. It's not just about where God calls you to. It's also where God calls you from that makes your calling so powerful. And the reason why I share this story is because as I'm going to go visit my cousin, they open up the module door, and when you go to visitations, there's these metal chairs in front of windows, and then there's a phone on one end and the prisoners on the other end. And when the door opened, I could see my cousin. He was pacing back and forth behind the window. He had no idea who was going to visit him. And when he looked and he saw me, we both started to cry. And we're here crying, man, two grown Simone men crying like babies. Come on, somebody. And so I sit down and I grab the phone and he grabs the phone and he starts apologizing to me. He starts talking about how he was doing really good and then my auntie died. He was doing good, and then my uncle passed away. And then he started to fall back into some old habits and started using drugs again and started going down this, this path that, that led him back into prison. And he was telling me, yo, I, I'm, I'm on my third strike. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at like eight to 10 years. And as I'm sitting here, mind you, <laughs> I just left the camporee that I was stressing about. Come on, somebody. I left the camporee that I was worried about if, if, if people were going to attend. I left the camporee that I was wondering if, if this was going to happen. And I'm, I was stressing out over those things. And I'm sitting here on the phone with my cousin who's looking to eight to ten years. And the Lord said to me at that moment while we're sitting in the chair in the window across from each other, the Spirit of God said this to me. I want to sow this into your heart today. The Lord said, where you sit will determine what you see. Sounds so nice, I better say it twice. 
as I am sitting there, stressed out about Campari, looking at my cousin, who's behind bars, looking at eight to 10 years, the Spirit of God said, Meshach, where you sit will determine what you see. And I got up and I prayed with my cousin. And I went back to that campery. <laughs> a new man, would you say amen? I went back to that campery with a whole different perspective, with a whole different mindset to understand that the Lord had to take me back to prison to not only remind me where he called me to, but where he called me from. It's not just where God has called you to, family. It's where God has called you from. And where you sit this week, where you sit will determine what you see. This week is about perspective. This week is how you see yourselves in the eyes of God. This week is how you view yourself. God called Abraham not based on his education, not based on his wealth, not based on his status, where he lived, what family he came from. He based his call on Abraham because he loved him. And check this out. What the Bible tells us this is that not only does God call you, but God chooses you. God not only calls you, but God chooses you. For all you Pokemon fans out there, come on, somebody. I choose you, Pikachu. If you know the concept of Pokemon, when you're a battle and you're fighting somebody, you need to pick the right Pokemon that's going to defeat the Pokemon that you're up against. Come on. And so understand this, that God does not only just call you, but God also chooses you. He takes you for who you are. And God chooses you because he loves you. Would you say amen? You see, a legacy can only be a legacy if it has legs to see. Come on. <laughs> Sounds so nice. Better say it twice. A legacy can only be a legacy if it has legs to see. Meaning this, a legacy is not a moment experience. A legacy isn't something that just happens once and does not happen again. You see, because for many of us, our faith, and many, many, of, our, many of our faith is based on just moments. Like it happened once, Lord, make it happen again. But, but can I tell you, our faith traditions at Adventist, in the middle of the 1800s, we were not a moment ministry. We were, we were actually a movement. Would you say amen? Your faith and your church tradition comes from a church that started off as a movement. But we can't claim to be a movement if ain't nobody. Oh, you, you, you know what I'm talking about. Can, 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 I, can, can I break it down and make it plain for you just a little bit more? The Bible says faith without works is, is dead. And what I'm saying is this, family, when God calls you, and when, when, let, let, let me pause here. I'm not talking about legalism when I'm talking about works. I'm, I'm not talking about earning your salvation in this text. Because the whole story about Abraham, the legacy is his faith. This was a man of faith. But faith without actions is it's dead. The Bible tells us this. Can, can, I, can I put it in terms that maybe you might understand a little bit better? Uh, let, let, let me tell you this. Your devotion... Because, you know, I heard that in your Pathfinder Pledge and Law, that we ought to devote ourselves to the Word of God. We ought to devote ourselves to prayer. We ought to uh, devote ourselves to service. Let me, let me say it this way. Your devotion does not have a magic potion. Would you say amen? Watch this now. Watch this slow. Here. Your devotion does not have a magic potion, but your devotion should give you the notion to keep you in motion. Come on, somebody. Faith that acts, faith that works is a devotion that gives you the notion, the healing of the Holy Spirit. It, the devotion is not a magic potion because a lot of people think that Jesus is a magician. Jesus is not a magician. He doesn't sprinkle fairy dust on you and then all of a sudden you're holy. Jesus is a miracle worker. And your devotion does not have a magic potion. But your devotion gives you the, the notion to keep you in. High five three people and say, get moving. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bless sir.
Here's, here's the reality, family. Here's the reality. You, you are only here because, Pathfinders, you are here because there were a generation before you that passed down a legacy that was passed down to them, that was passed down to them, that is now passed down to you. Some of you said to me, absolutely. And this, 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 this generation, you need to understand that there is people that have gone before you. I'm only here because my grandma, right, who came from Samoa, who only had like a fourth grade education, came all the way to America. Now watch this. My grandma had a fourth grade education. She's the richest unemployed woman that I know. Amen, somebody. She came down with my mom and my, my pops to make sure that we could have a better life. Now, when she came to America, she had a lack of education. She had a lack of experience. She couldn't even speak the language. But how is it that my grandma was able to come and build a church? Come on, somebody. <laughs> build a church, build a ministry, buy a home, get a car in America with a lack of all of that. Yet we have everything, every tool, every resource, and we can't seem to do mm. That legacy was passed down to me, which is now a legacy that I need to pass down to my boys, would you say amen? See, I want you to understand that this kingdom legacy that, that has been passed down to me and to my family and to my children, this isn't, this isn't something tangible. Meaning, they, they didn't pass me down uh, any land. They, they didn't pass me down a house that she had bought or money or cars or she passed me down a legacy of hope she passed me down a legacy of love a legacy of faith a legacy that will last long before my lifetime has ended and the legacy that god wants to pour into you family is a kingdom legacy now psalms 78 verse 4 as we wrap this up says this we will not hide these truths from our children that's you we will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord, about his wonder, and the Bible says this, we will tell our children, the next generation, about his mighty power. Back in 2016, I was asked um, by our division to do research on why ethnic minorities, more specifically why Pacific Islander young people were leaving our church in North America. At the time, I was pastoring uh, four of our Samoan churches. I was a youth and young adult pastor. I was a district pastor there. And so what I did was I, 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 I took a survey, and I passed it out to all of my young people, all of my young people in Compton, all of my young people in Orange County, had some young people down in San Diego County, Oceanside, all over Southern California. Now watch this. I not only gave this survey to all our young people that was in the church, but I especially went to all of our young people and young adults that have left the church. And I went to go visit them. You know, a lot of our young people, they, they, they was out there in the neighborhood, in the garage, getting high and just living life. And I, I would walk in there and I'd come there and say, Pastor, what you doing in here? I said, man, I just wanted to ask you some questions. I wanted to know, like, why did you leave the church? Why did you leave the church? And you know, this is, this is something that that we got to understand as leaders. That young person said to me, Pastor, I didn't, I didn't, I might have left the church, but I didn't leave Jesus. And he started to write down all these things of why he left the church. In this survey, he started to list all these things of why it is that he lost, he lost faith in the church, but he didn't lose faith in God. And so I took this survey and I put together this whole uh, presentation they flew me out all the way to Florida. Mind you, I ain't never been to Florida. I'm just a Samoan kid pastoring four Samoan churches in Southern California that could barely put gas in my car. And they're going to fly me to Florida. I get there. I put this whole presentation together. I'm about to present on why our ethnic minority Pacific Islander young people are leaving the church. And as I get there, I sit down. I didn't realize what I was getting into. I walked into this huge conference room with huh, conference presidents, the educators, administrative. We had hospital, 
board members. It was about like, it was like 150 people. And when I was looking at the bulletin of who was speaking, it was like Dr. So-and-so, President So-and-so, Vice President So-and-so. And then on the very bottom, it was like Pastor Meshach. And I was like, man, I'm like the most uneducated, unqualified brownie in this room. Come on, somebody. But what happens is this. I started to feel, I started to question my call. I started to feel insignificant amongst all these other people here. And I started to doubt my calling. I started to think to myself, Lord, why you call me over here to make a fool out of myself in front of all these people? As I'm sitting there, getting ready to go up, <laughs> thinking of a way to get out of this predicament, the pastor that went before me presented a chart. And on this chart, it broke down the piece of the pie in regards to the demographics of ethnicities or, or race, culture, that represents all of North America. And he pulls up this PowerPoint and in this pie chart, it says this big old piece of the pie said Hispanics. <laughs> and then it said on the other piece of the pie was the African American, a larger piece of the pie chart was Asian, and then it got down smaller and smaller and then all of a sudden, it came down to where we are represented. And we weren't even labeled Pacific Islanders. It said natives slash others, and it said this, 2%. And guess what? It was that time that the Spirit of God spoke to my heart and says, Meshach, you ain't here for yourself. <laughs> I didn't call you and open this door for you and chose you to be here to represent yourself. You are here on behalf of all the young people that are no longer in church. You are here to speak on behalf of all the adults, all the youth that would never have a, a voice or a word at this platform. And the word I want to sow into you today, family, as we wrap this up is simply this. I don't know who here hears this tonight, but I want you to know that not only are you chosen, but you are called. And you are called because you are loved. You are valued. Family, you are forgiven. Pathfinders, you are beautiful. You are worthy. You are special. You are intelligent. You are courageous. You are kingdom. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are chosen and you are loved. Would you say amen? You are chosen and you are called because you are loved. And the last quote that I want to leave you today before we go is simply this. The greatest changes that will happen in your life will happen when you start to see yourself the way that God sees you. The greatest changes in your life, young people, pathfinders, the greatest changes that will happen in your life will happen when you start to see yourself the way that God sees you. And the greatest changes that will happen in the world around you is when you start to see others the way that God sees them. Let's pray. Father God, we know that it's raining and to me, that's just a sign of the latter rain. It reminds me of the, how the Spirit of God is going to take this generation of young people and use them, empower them, equip them, call them, and send them out to change the world. And so, Father God, today I want to say a prayer of anointing over every young person that is here, every leader, every director, every pastor, every parent, every sponsor, that, Father God, that you would bless them. And as you've done for Abraham, let them know that they are blessed so they could be a blessing to the world. And Father, as we leave this place, help us to know that you called us not because of our education, not because of our ethnicity, but you called us because you loved us. And not only have you called us, but you have chosen us. In Jesus' name we pray. May everybody say amen and amen. God bless you.